a hundred years ago, uh, corn, every cornfield was red with poppies at this time of the year. But with the coming of herbicides, cornfield weeds that had been part of the arable landscape since the very earliest days of farming uh, have more or less disappeared. And to appreciate their aesthetic appeal, uh, we have to contemplate the works of landscape painters and poets from that long vanished era or travel to parts of the world where agriculture is less intensive. With us here in Ireland, uh, the red corn poppy has more or less retreated now to waste places, uh, roadsides, quarries, places like that. It's four dark red petals make poppies one of the easiest of flowers to recognise. But the strange thing about this is that the bees that pollinate the poppies can't see red. To their eyes, the flowers are ultraviolet, a colour that we can not just not see, but we can't even imagine. The flower has the most ephemeral of sepals, just two of these, that fall as soon as the flower opens and a day or so later the dark red skirt of the petals is cast off, leaving just the developing fruit. What attracts the bees is not nectar, because the flowers don't produce any but pollen, which it produces in enormous quantities, and which the bees gather into their pollen baskets by rolling around among the stamens, a phenomenon that is known as buzz pollination. The flower has a compound ovary, which developed over millions of years from numerous individual carpels, at the summit of which the stigmas are arranged like the spokes of a wheel. Anthers and stigmas mature at the same time, but the flowers are self-incompatible. While the fruit is maturing, this compound stigma forms a lid over the ovary, which contains a myriad of small seeds. When these are ripe, the lid lifts up on this exquisite little pepper pot capsule to allow the seeds to be scattered in the breeze when the weather is dry. But it remains attached to the ovary wall by a ring of struts which shrink back in wet weather. These seeds can remain viable for years until disturbance of the soil stimulates them to germinate many years or even decades later as happened most familiarly on the battlefields of the First World War, and doubtless on those of countless other, less well-remembered battlefields before and since. Worldwide there are something like 80 species of poppy, but here in Ireland we have just the two common wild species, there's the corn poppy with larger, darker red flowers. Uh, and we have the long-headed poppy where the flowers are smaller and paler and the capsule is narrower and, and more tapering. And we often encounter a third species in the wild where it's an escape from cultivation. And that's the opium poppy, originally native to Turkey and which is the source of morphine and codeine. Our wild poppies uh, have only mild narcotic properties because they only have a chemical called uh, riodine. Uh, it's used sometimes uh, to make a syrup for pleurisy and coughs or to help you to, to sleep. But in the past and to a great extent today, poppies had a multitude of other uses apart from their nar narcotic properties. Um, the seeds were widely used to flavour cakes and breads uh, not so much with us nowadays, but certainly in the cuisine of the, the Middle East, it's very, very popular. Uh, a dye made from the petals is used to uh, add, add to certain wines and uh, medicines. And it may surprise you to learn that the oil of poppies uh, is inferior only to olive oil. In Greek mythology, poppies were thought to have been created by Ceres the goddess of corn, who taught the arts of farming to mankind. Her daughter, Proserpina, had been abducted by Hades, the god of the underworld. And as she wandered the world in search of her daughter, Ceres 
caused poppies to spring up in the cornfields wherever she travelled for their beauty and in order to ease the pain of the grieving human soul.